Welcome back to another Power BI tutorial. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick look into how Direct Query works behind the scenes. Direct Query is a connection type in Power BI that allows you to maintain up-to-date data, but also comes at the cost of sending a lot of traffic to your data source. In this video, we're going to monitor all of the queries that hit our SQL Server database uh, because of Direct Query. So let's go ahead and set up our Direct Query report. So we're going to go to Get Data and SQL Server and we're gonna type in our server name, BI SQL Express, and our database we're working with is AdventureWorks DW 2012. We're gonna click on this direct query mode and go to advanced options and put in just a quick little uh, SQL statement. I'm gonna take four columns from the fact internet sales table uh, and we're gonna go ahead and click okay. I'm only taking four columns here because it's gonna make our query much more easy to understand. So if we click load, so now we have query one over here with our four columns. Let's go ahead and get data one more time. Uh, BI SQL Express Adventure Works DW 2012. See now we only can choose direct query because import is now grayed out because you can only have one. Now let's go to advanced options again and I am going to paste in this little SQL query basically takes the most recent query that was ran against your database, but also has a lot of logic here to make it run slowly. So that is always the last query to be run. Um, so we'll go ahead and paste this in and click OK. And once that's in there, we're going to have query two on the right. Awesome. So we have query two that shows us our last SQL query in the time of execution. So let's go ahead and throw in a nice line chart. Uh, we're gonna throw in order date in the axis, uh, sales amount in the values, and we get a graph that looks like this. Let's go ahead and also throw in a slicer for order date down here. And we'll make, uh, we'll make these dates a little bit bigger. just to make it nice and readable. And lastly, we're going to add a card on the right side that's going to display to us our query, our last query that we ran. And we are going to get rid of category label. We're gonna make this data label a little bit smaller because those queries will get pretty big. That might even be too big, but we'll see. So we can see that the last query that was ran against our database was this select max of order date, min of order date, from our select statement with our four columns. Basically, it's just showing us the range from the lowest order date to the max order date. That's kind of what we'd expect. But what if we go ahead and change this order date filter? Let's go ahead and change this to something around 10-7-2011. And we'll go to 11-20-2012. Um, and we see this query that has been now been updated. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit smaller because it's starting to run off the page. So there are a couple things that we need to note here. The first is this where clause. We now have this date range where it says where order date is less than, and then it says November 21st, 2012, and greater than or equal to uh, October 7th, 2011. So it totally fits with our date filter in here. Um, a couple other things to note, we're still taking the sum of sales amount um, because if you look at our visualization on the sales amount, we are taking the sum. So it's taking this sum in the SQL statement. And the last thing you should note is that it's uh, requesting the top 1 million in one rows. Um, direct query limits your return to 1 million rows. If your visualization returns more than 1 million rows, it's going to cause an error. So it always has this top 1 million and 1 to ensure that you don't actually go over this. It basically keeps your long running queries a little bit shorter. Um, but for our case, we're not going to deal with 1 million rows because we're taking a sum by order date. So at max, we're going to have um, just one point for every day in this date range. So let's go ahead and add another filter and see how direct query handles multiple slicers. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Uh, and then I'm going to add another slicer here. I'm going to throw in unit price this time. I'll make this a little bit bigger. 
and the date input's a little bit smaller. All right, so for unit price, I'll make the inputs a little bit bigger. And we will filter this down to some arbitrary uh, range here. And this actually needs to be a little bit smaller. There we go, that'll work. Um, so this looks almost the exact same. We still have the same where for the order date, uh, order date range. But now we have these two parameters at the very top of the query. We have at param1, which is a float, and at param2, which is also a float. These floats match up with these unit prices. And we can see at the very end, we have this and uh, that then says, and unit price is less than or equal to at param1, and unit price is greater than or equal to at param2. So it can be deduced from that statement that at param1 is this uh, 2270.6, and that uh, at param2 is a 614.74. So basically just adds a couple of parameters that it then uses in your query to determine which data it should return back. So that kind of makes sense. And with every other slice that we'd add, we would just see more and more parameters. But let's go ahead and add an example where we might have a more complicated DAX measure um, that might actually uh, change things up a little bit. So let's go ahead and create a new measure. We'll right click, new measure, and we'll do a one month rolling average. So we'll call that one month rolling average. And we're gonna set this equal to, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. We're gonna set this equal to calculate sum of sales amount. And we're gonna use the dates and period function. Uh, dates and period, we're using order date, first date, order date. We're going back uh, negative one months and we can close that off. So that's calculating the sum. We are then going to divide that by the exact same thing except we're going to take the distinct count of order date. And the reason I'm actually uh, coding this 12, uh, one month rolling average like this is because I wanted to include a sum uh, statement and a distinct count statement. And this is actually a little bit of a distinction that I'll cover in just a second. But if we click OK here and we bring in our one month rolling average, it's going to take a little bit of time to actually crunch through that all and calculate that. So give it just a second. Now it's all completed. That took about maybe 15 seconds to complete that. And now we'll take a look into why that might have taken so long. If this were an import report, that would have taken maybe a second. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump over to SQL Server Management Studio and see what queries hit our database in that example. So in SSMS, we have our query here that can show us all of our recent queries. When we run our query, um, to specify just the last uh, queries that we're running as the database, we see that we have 381 rows returned. Uh, if you scroll down, these are all similar queries, except they will have different date ranges. I'll give you a quick example of that. Uh, in new query, I'm gonna paste in uh, just one of those. I'll take in the second one. I'll paste that below it. So they look almost identical, except as we scroll over to the right, we'll start to see different date ranges. Yeah, we start to see some differences in the dates that we are specifying here. Like we see a couple of different days. So it's basically looping through every single data point in this range and sending a new query to our database asking for that specific one month date range for the one month rolling average. So we get a lot of traffic to our database. Uh, in this case, 381 rows returned, which is quite a lot. The one distinction I wanted to make when I was talking about the sum and distinct count is that uh, sum is an additive aggregation and distinct count is a non-additive, uh, which makes some sense because you add things when you sum things. And you, well, when you're taking a distinct count, it's not adding anything, it's just making an aggregation. Um, before the February 2018 update, this would have actually resulted in double the, the amount of queries 
because the additive and non additive aggregations would have to be um, queried separately. So we would have expected over 700 rows, but because of Power BI's update, uh, they now get queried at the same time, which means we only have 381, which is still a lot of queries. So uh, I hope this gave you a little insight into how direct query works as it queries your database. Um, it definitely is a big trade-off between being able to have live data and sending a ton of traffic to your data source. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next Power BI video.